Well, good morning and welcome back to our adventure in Luke's Gospel and we're in Luke 2 again today. So Jesus has now been born and that sets in train um, send a, a series of events. First there's circumcision, that's day 8, when Jesus has officially named Yeshua salvation as Gabriel instructed. This is where Joseph officially adopts Jesus as his own and that's quite a story in its own right. Next, on day 40, Mary had to go to the temple for her own purification ritual and make a sacrifice. If you were poor, you could just offer a couple of pigeons or doves rather than a lamb. And that's what she did because presumably had very little money. And Joseph probably wasn't working, so no workshop, no tools, no money. So at the same time, they would have presented their firstborn son to God, which was a requirement. If you read the law, it was considered that firstborn males belonged to God. But according to Numbers 3 and Numbers 8, God accepted the Levite tribe instead of the firstborn. So unless the average family had 24 kids half of them male and half female, Israel had much the better of this particular deal. Anyway, Mary and Joseph are at the temple. Jesus is nearly six weeks old and they meet a man called Simeon. And here the Holy Spirit once again features because Simeon just knows he has to be in the temple that day. And we're told that he was righteous and devout and some are waiting for the consolation of Israel, which Isaiah speaks of multiple times. And on your screen are some references in Isaiah that you can locate for yourself to demonstrate this emphasis of Messiah as the comfort of Israel, the consolation. So like Mary, Zechariah and the angels before, Simeon, just bursts into song, declaring the baby as Israel's Yeshua, their salvation. We mentioned that last week. And he refers to him as light to the non-Jewish nations as well as Israel. He goes on to prophesy four unexpected things. Firstly, Jesus will cause the falling and rising of many in Israel. He is a sign that will be spoken against opposition, not acceptance. That he exposes the true state of people's hearts and that a sword will pierce Mary's own soul too. This did not fit the normal contemporary concept of what Messiah would achieve but every word of it came true. And not content with that, God also arranges for Anna, which is Hannah in Hebrew, to be on the spot that day. And she's quite a lady too, because now 84, Anna has spent all but seven years of her adult life as a widow without visible means of support. It's a life of faith. She spends nearly every waking hour in the temple as a full-time worshipper. And she too joins Simeon and co, endorsing his words and starting preaching to anyone who will listen about this remarkable baby. Well, Luke then has the family returning to Nazareth. He entirely omits the flight to Egypt and Herod's homicidal slaughter of the under twos some call that a contradiction, but in a contradiction, two statements can't be true. This is just a redaction. It's not a contradiction. Luke just misses it out. Both stories finish at back up north at Nazareth. And perhaps Luke has just made his points and he wants to move the biography on. I think so. In conclusion, I love Simeon's Nunc Dimittis. And to sum up, Simeon says, 
I've seen prophecy come true today. I've seen Messiah with my own eyes. God, now let your servant depart in peace. I can die happy. And that is today's musing. If you were facing death tonight, could you die truly contented? Mission accomplished. If not, why not? Have a muse. <laughs>